This is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. Today's video is dedicated specifically to Niall Gardner. Now, if you don't know who Niall Gardner is, he is the director of the Heritage Foundation's Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom and the Bernard and Barbara Loams Fellow. And you might have seen his name being floated around as the leading spokesperson for Prince Harry's visa application and this ongoing lawsuit with DHS. Yesterday, I did a video, and in that video, I did specifically mention Niall Gardner's post and annoyance surrounding Meghan and Harry involving themselves in meddling in the U.S. elections. Yesterday, Niall Gardner posts this about an interview that he did with the Mail Online in which he writes, The U.S. ambassador to London's arrogant remarks on Prince Harry are an extraordinary intervention by a senior U.S. diplomat on an ongoing federal court case. The Biden administration has gone to great lengths to protect Prince Harry and has even ruled out the possible deportation of the Duke of Sussex if he lied on his U.S. immigration application and violated U.S. immigration law. The Biden administration has acted without transparency and accountability to the American people regarding the Heritage Foundation's freedom of information request relating to Prince Harry's U.S. immigration application. They should release Harry's immigration records to the American people. Prince Harry's U.S. visa records sought, and this is the article. Mail Online exclusive. It says campaigners demanding Prince Harry's U.S. visa be made public submit extraordinary comments by Joe Biden's U.K. ambassador to judge in new bid to make his immigration status public. The UK ambassador in question is Jane Hartley, seen here. This was the interview that she did with Sky News on March 25th. We all missed what the US ambassador said about Prince Harry, and that's because we were so distracted by all the chaos that Meghan and the squad had created surrounding Princess Catherine. I'm glad to see, though, that the Heritage Foundation was on the ball capturing this and submitting it into this court case. And we'll look at that in a second, but let's quickly go through this article. In this article, Neil Gardner said, the U.S. ambassador's remarks clearly spoke directly not only to the Duke of Sussex's current immigration status, but to Prince Harry's future immigration status as well. He added, the Biden administration has gone to great lengths to protect Prince Harry and has even ruled out the possible deportation of the Duke of Sussex if he lied on his U.S. immigration application and violated U.S. immigration law. So let's take a look at what the U.S. ambassador actually said. Apparently, uh, President Trump says he thinks that he might deport Harry um, if he becomes president. Um, (laughs) What can I say? (laughs) I mean, I didn't hear that, but... uh, It's not going to happen, though, is it? Well, it's not going to happen in the Biden administration. (laughs) There we are. This was an extraordinary statement to come from the U.S. ambassador to the U.K., commenting on a federal court case in which... Heritage Foundation argues now that Ambassador Hartley spoke directly to some of the very information concerning the Duke of Sussex's immigration status sought by plaintiffs in the FOIA request. Information DHS has repeatedly told this court must be kept confidential. His comments came as Judge Nichols is reviewing records relating to Harry's immigration status and deciding whether they should be made public. Ambassador Hartley's statements dramatically enhance the already compelling public interest in disclosure, the Heritage Foundation said in its filing. It said the ambassador selectively disclosed details while the DHS was simultaneously vigorously resisting any disclosure in this matter, and that should be considered by the judge. The Heritage Foundation wants Harry's visa records released to see if he confirmed on his application that he had used drugs and if he was given any special treatment by immigration authorities. When you look at the comments under Niall Gardner's recent posts, you recognize that people still don't get it, with maybe one or two saying Harry's getting involved in politics and he needs to stay out, especially since he has been aligned with the Aspen Institute. Like here, Lulu L.A. flying the flag for our British royals says, Niall, why is the Heritage Foundation not flagging up his interference in U.S. government policy on censorship with his role in the Aspen Institute and his public claim the First Amendment is bonkers? Yeah, that is a valid question. Now, for a brief second, let's put ourselves in the shoes of the Department of Homeland Security. 
Keep in mind, this is headed up by Alejandro Mayorkas, the one who is committing treason at this very moment by keeping our borders wide open, threatening and jeopardizing the safety of the American citizens. He is not defending the homeland. So by doing that, in addition to acting on releasing information on whether or not Harry admitted to his drug use, and let's say he did lie, that's going to open up a whole Pandora's box into all the other applications, the millions of applications that get submitted and most likely goes unchecked, especially if they are influential people in society. And I think DHS is probably thinking to expose information on whether or not he lied about his drug use on his application would not be worth it to then bring on an onslaught of people scrutinizing their processes and other people who might be in the country that could have lied on their application. Immigration is the hottest topic concerning the 2024 election. So no doubt the Biden administration is doing everything they can to prevent this from escalating and damaging Biden's re-election campaign. Now, from what I'm reading in the media, and we all know that our media is controlled, there is this optic being presented that America really doesn't care about Prince Harry doing drugs or if he lied because it doesn't affect them. And for the most part, they don't think about Prince Harry. He's a non-entity here in the United States. A lot of people don't care about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. But the reason why we care about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle is because of the nefarious things that they are doing on the down low to affect every citizen in the United States concerning our First Amendment rights. So the core roadblock here to getting this information released is that DHS is holding the position that Prince Harry's privacy outweighs the public interests. And the way that they look at this is if they release his information How is that going to affect him? Will he be put in harm's way? Will his reputation be damaged? Will he be subjected to prejudices and so forth? In the Heritage Foundation's defense, the argument that they're presenting is the American people deserve to know whether or not the government are following their own rules and protocol when it comes to people of a certain status and political position. And this is the point that the Heritage Foundation wants to verify is that are people of this certain political and wealth status getting privileges over regular Americans? And if that be the case, then that needs to be exposed. It is my opinion, but sadly, we do not live in a country where all men are created equal. It's clearly not, especially when it comes to the wealthy elite. Now, if you're an outsider and have not been following this story, And like many Americans who have been sleepwalking through what the media has done to all of us, you would say, what's the big deal? Who cares what he put on his application? It's one simple question. It doesn't affect you directly. And this is most likely going through the majority of people when they look at this case from the outside. To give this more meat and substance and make it matter to the American people is to talk about Harry's interference with our Constitution and his work in alignment with the censorship industrial complex beginning supporting the Biden regime in 2020. America has 1,000% the right to know if we have an immigrant here who has been influencing our government. We should know if Harry was on a diplomat visa when he was acting on behalf of the state, working with Aspen Institute, using taxpayer money to produce that Aspen Commission on Information Disorder in trying to push policy, we should know if we have a foreign agent here that is unregistered because that's against the law. We also need to protect our constitution and defend our homeland because the people in charge are not doing it. The American public interest absolutely outweighs the need to protect Harry's damn privacy. A self-professed illegal drug user breaking the law as an unregistered foreign agent acting on behalf of the state to influence taking away Americans' First Amendment rights. And let's not forget that Meghan and Harry have this homegrown domestic terrorist group that they fund and support called the Sussex Squad. Now, with that being said, Prince Harry's privacy does not outweigh the American public interest because in this context and what he has been doing, He is seen as a domestic threat. At all costs, America has to protect its constitution. This is why we fought in wars. Now, we just heard Jane Hartley, the U.S. ambassador to the U.K., openly state that it's unlikely that Prince Harry will be deported under the Biden administration. 
that sends a bold message to the American people that, yes, the Biden administration treats people of a certain wealth and status differently than regular Americans. Because what if Prince Harry did admit to his drug use? He wouldn't have been allowed to come into the country. Or if he lied on his application, it's almost like the U.S. government is going to look the other way. That's essentially what that statement the ambassador conveyed to the world. So I agree with the Heritage Foundation. They absolutely need to raise this with the judge before they make a decision on whether or not we know about this information. But I think that the Heritage Foundation should anchor themselves with our Constitution because that's the law of the land. That's who we are. And if that is under threat, I think America has the right to know that, especially knowing if the Biden administration was aware and bless the activities and work that Harry had been doing with the group of people who are now getting sued in the Missouri versus Biden lawsuit. I do think America would like to know if our current government is trying to take away our inalienable rights, which the First Amendment, if that falls, which we all know there's an active movement around the world trying to censor and control speech online, I think America needs to get that sorted before November comes. This is a guy who openly admitted with Rene DeResta, with Rashad Robinson on the Wired interview that he knew about January 6th. Why is it that the Biden administration never pulled him in for questioning? Now, it's my opinion, but I think that the Heritage Foundation also needs to include our 12th Agassi public charity and the tax fraud that's being committed. Meghan and Harry have this 501c3 public charity status, but they are operating as a political action committee, not only to support causes for our election, but also to fund censorship initiatives as part of this censorship industrial complex. So this vehicle, R12 Fugazi Public Charity, needs to be investigated by the IRS. I think Americans have the right to know if R12 is being funded by American taxpayer money. And that's the thing. Under the Biden administration, a lot of these programs to where money is being siphoned and stolen from the American people are going into these NGOs. And that information is not disclosed. So I think there should be an investigation there because it's just too convenient that Archwell aligns perfectly with the Biden administration whenever they have programs and tax dollar money is available. So, you know, a lot of times when we say, why did they pick that? Or how random? They never talked about saving Afghan refugees and getting them settled. Well, now you know, money has been put in certain programs by the Biden administration that I am sure Meghan and Harry have their sticky little fingers in and now grifting off of the American taxpayer because what else do they have left and how is it that they're able to continue with this absurd lifestyle? At bare minimum, we know that the report that they put out for the Aspen Institute on information disorder was funded by the taxpayer. So right there, Harry is on the hook for acting on behalf of the state. Matt Taibbi exposed the evidence in the Twitter files. So where is Harry going to run and what excuse is he going to make? And just a side note, as I had suspected in a previous video, that funding most likely is coming from USAID or the State Department. I had covered this in the South by Southwest video, thinking that possibly CIA might be funding a lot of the initiatives that we see Harry and Meghan on that make absolutely no sense. For those that are interested or want to visit that, this was the video that I did a month ago covering the U.S. government, and the programs that Harry and Meghan seem to conveniently align with in order to pull funds, which majority of these funds coming from USAID. In the event that Niall Gardner sees this video or someone is telling him about this, I have created a special playlist for the Heritage Foundation and for Niall to peruse with 11 videos that I think is a good primer to show that this couple have been heavily aligned the last couple of years while using their British titles, especially Prince Harry, to meddle in our government. Now, Mr. Gardner, if you're listening and that playlist piqued your interest, then definitely continue over to the Stand Up for Free Speech playlist that has 30 additional more videos that cover Harry and Meghan's nefarious dealings and involvement with undermining the U.S. Constitution. From a personal standpoint, what I would like to see come out of this is the truth, because we know that they lied from the very beginning, and I will guarantee you that those visa records are going to tell a very different story to the one that they told us about their exit 
from the royal family. As I've stated before, I do not believe that Meghan and Harry fled Canada in March and was in the United States at that time. I believe that they were in the United States earlier. So I would like to know from this visa application if indeed they fled Canada to go to the United States in March. I guarantee that the story that the visa is showing tells a very different one to the one that they were telling the public. That's my humble opinion. But what do you guys think? If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you're on Twitter, please let Niall Gardner know that this video is dedicated to him and I've set up a nice little playlist just for him to look through in order to help this Heritage Foundation case. Americans absolutely have the right to know about Harry's visa, especially since he's openly admitted to doing drugs. And if he had been under the influence while he had been influencing, interfering with our constitutional civil rights, America is going to have a problem with that, especially if the current administration has been supportive and backing it. That's why we need to know. And transparency is key to all of this. So on that note, what do you guys think? As always, I will be back with more content. But until then, please be safe, and I will talk to you later. Bye! It was such a broad. <laughs>